Today I was listening to a podcast and a guy with plaque in his arteries was talking about blood testing ApoA1, neutrophils, and Fetuin A, which is a protein involved in artery calcification. If you, like most people, only do a blood test once a year or even less, it makes it extremely difficult to assess what really is going on with your health. To make matters worse, there are thousands of blood tests you could be doing and the medical system is, isn't interested in optimizing your health. So you're on your own in deciding what are the best blood tests to focus on and it's a complicated field of study and choosing the best blood tests is difficult, actually impossible unless you've had your DNA analyzed to provide insights into this. Now if you have an annual blood draw, your doctor will usually test you for two things diabetes and high cholesterol. These two areas are where most of the drugs are sold, diabetes and high cholesterol. They might also check your blood pressure because that's another blockbuster drug market, but that's about it for blood testing, diabetes and cholesterol. These blood tests are called a lipid panel and a comprehensive metabolic panel. Both of these cost $10 with ownyourlabs.com, but comprehensive metabolic panel sounds really comprehensive because it's called a comprehensive metabolic panel but ironically it's super basic it ignores vitamins and minerals it ignores your thyroid which is your energy hormone factory it ignores your sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen it ignores your inflammatory markers and it obviously ignores your genetic risks and don't be afraid of genetic testing it's usually only about forty dollars with myheritage.com when they run a sale and my heritage tests 700,000 SNPs. So it's incredibly competitive and thorough for looking at your MTHFR, MTHFR genes and your homocysteine genes, which we're going to talk about today. Just be sure to register your DNA test under an alias. Use a fake name so it's more confidential. In America, we have the GINA Act, the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act which protects individuals from genetic discrimination by insurance companies since 2008, but it's always best to use an alias anyways. My point here is most people don't know a lot of information about how their body functions at an optimal level in order to protect against cancer, brain disorders, heart attacks, or any number of other lurking health issues because they're doing a once per year snapshot with two $10 blood tests that clinics charge $100 for. To make matters worse, Sometimes you have one bad blood test due to poor sleep or you're fighting a flu or you overtrain in the gym or you did some other unusual thing and your medical doctor will prescribe you a lifetime of pharmaceutical drugs based on that one single bad blood test result which is expensive for you in the long run and risky in terms of potential drug side effects, obviously. Anyway, let's talk today about the gayest sounding blood test you can do, HOMO. Cysteine. Homocysteine is rarely added to blood tests unless you request it or unless you test for it on your own with ownyourlabs.com, which is usually what I recommend for people to do when they need to test it. So when should you test for homocysteine? First, if you have a family history of homocysteine related health problems, which we'll talk about later, or if you have a genetic risk for running high on homocysteine. The technical term is homocysteinemia or homocysteinuria. That just means high homocysteine. And diving right into it, in terms of the genetic risks, the CBS gene is one of the highest risk genes leading to a tendency to have high homocysteine. And there are different degrees of risk on that CBS gene, but that's one of the most important genes, if not the most important. Plus the MTHFR gene is your classic risk gene for higher homocysteine. And I just put out an MTHFR video, so I recommend watching that if you don't know about the MTHFR gene and folic acid and that story. It's a complex issue because some of these genes are responsive to vitamin B6, but not all. And some of these genes are responsive to vitamin B9, but not all. So it's a case-by-case -case thing that can cost a lot of money guessing and retesting your blood unless you do a DNA test, which is my preferred recommendation and my main focus at ajconsultingcompany.com. Anyway, before we talk about the optimal range on a blood test for homocysteine, let's talk about health problems arising from having too much homocysteine. Not many people talk about homocysteine because the word is difficult to pronounce and difficult to remember, but it's a simple blood test. And most of the health problems from high homocysteine 
relate to the plumbing in your body, meaning your arteries and blood vessels, because homocysteine can damage the lining of your plumbing. And let me just read a list of problems linked to high homocysteine. And it's a long list, starting with higher rates of Alzheimer's disease, birth defects, blood clots, cancer. I'm planning to do a simplified video on that topic soon, cancer. So watch out for that. Coronary artery disease, dementia, miscarriage, Parkinson's disease, strokes, and more. Heart disease is a particularly common risk relating to high homocysteine, from my experience doing DNA consulting. And yet, most statin-pushing conventional cardiologists ignore homocysteine as a blood test marker for heart disease, unless, of course, you already have had a heart attack. Some doctors check homocysteine, but it's rare, in my experience, seeing blood work from thousands of different people. And homocysteine is also generally ignored in elderly people as an extreme risk for Alzheimer's. And that would be another high stakes situation where you don't want to wait until you have the disease before taking action, obviously. In other words, most doctors wait until people have Alzheimer's before investigating the causes, but we should be focusing on prevention when we have higher genetic risks. Prevention in this case means getting your homocysteine down. And believe it or not, plumbing and blood flow is extremely important for brain performance and protection against all kinds of dementia, including Alzheimer's. So that's probably how it's directly connected as a risk for Alzheimer's. Anyway, if you have bad genes or if your homocysteine is high on your blood test, it's a trigger for inflammation in your body. That's the problem for homocysteine, inflammation. Homocysteine drives up cytokines. And these cytokines can damage your brain, your arteries, your plumbing, all sorts of things when they're washing through your bloodstream. So it's clearly not a good thing to have hyperhomocysteinemia or high homocysteine, hyper means high. Okay, so what is the normal range on a blood test? Well, most blood test companies say five to 15 micromoles per liter is the normal range. But normal ranges are based on average Americans and average Americans are not healthy. This is a problem with testosterone levels, vitamin D levels, blood sugar levels, triglyceride levels, and many other blood tests, normal range levels. You can't trust the normal ranges. So what should the range be? Well, the optimal range, in my opinion, is below seven. You want to be below seven. It's okay to be five or six because a little bit of baseline homocysteine is natural and it doesn't trigger your immune system, but you want to be below seven. To dip into a few research studies, let's start with Alzheimer's disease because a New England Journal of Medicine article from 2002 found that if your homocysteine level was greater than 14, your risk of Alzheimer's doubled. And the study had hundreds of people ranging from 3.5, 4.5, 5.5, all the way up to the mid-60s on their homocysteine levels, which is insane, mid-60s. And the people in the study were from different age groups, so it had a good spread of coverage. And in summary, they found that the lowest quintile for homocysteine showed the lowest incidence of Alzheimer's. In this case, it was people below 8.2 on their homocysteine. Uh, so from this one study, you could make an argument that being below 8 is optimal. And that's an improvement on what your standard blood tests with the range 5 to 15. But there are other studies to consider rather than just end of life Alzheimer's risk. For example, in the, in the European Journal of Nutrition in 2019, a study found higher mortality, accelerated aging as measured by telomeres, and as always higher heart disease risk was found in people with higher homocysteine. And it's hard to interpret the study by showing brief images from the study because the data was log adjusted, meaning they mathematically transformed the numbers using a logarithm before dividing it into quartiles. But among the 2,968 people in this study, the quartile with homocysteine between 5 to 7 consistently showed the best overall health outcomes. More than anything, what really influences me to say below 7 is the optimal cutoff for homocysteine is Dr. Joseph Pizzorno, who wrote an extremely in-depth medical journal article about the topic of optimized homocysteine. Dr. Pizzorno in the article discusses how age tends to increase homocysteine and other types of inflammation, which is a major problem with aging, by the way. But Doc Pizzorno talks about vitamin B deficiencies and how these contribute to high homocysteine. Prescription drugs of all types increase homocysteine. 
And Dr. Pizzorno even lists all the genes involved in homocysteine metabolism, which of course, I personally analyze these exact genes for people when I do DNA consults. But Dr. Pizzorno says, my best estimate is that the ideal range is five to seven millimoles per liter. And I generally just say below seven is optimal because people that are lower than five are super rare and there is no strong evidence that being below five is directly problematic. So for example, if you're severely malnourished and your homocysteine is super, super low, you have health problems, but that's nothing directly to do with the homocysteine. You'll have health problems because you're severely malnourished. So low homocysteine isn't something I focus on and I don't think you should worry about it. So what can you do if your homocysteine is higher than seven? Well, almost everything you do to optimize your health helps. So anyone who says just take these five supplements is usually not addressing the root cause and they're probably selling those five supplements. For example, after women go through menopause, if they do hormone replacement therapy, which I think is necessary for optimal health after menopause, you see a 20.7% reduction in homocysteine when women used estrogen and a 12.2% reduction with women with estrogen plus progestin, which is a synthetic progesterone, meaning they gave women a fake version of progesterone rather than bioidentical progesterone in this study. And this, by the way, is the reason you can't just read headlines for these studies. There is always some hidden nonsense going on, it seems, due to the way our medical system operates. America is brought to you by Pfizer. CBS Health Watch, sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360, brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference. Brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight. Brought to you by Pfizer. Early start. Brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett out front. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. This weather report brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. And now a CBS Sports update brought to you by Pfizer. Meet the press. Data download. Brought to you by Pfizer. Pfizer. This portion of CBS This Morning, sponsored by Pfizer. On how to find the hidden sugars in the American family diet, sponsored by Pfizer. But going back to overall health and homocysteine, short sleep duration and probably sleep quality, if I had to guess, is associated with increased serum homocysteine, meaning sleep is important as always. Exercise is interesting in relation to your homocysteine because acute exercise, meaning brief and short term, 40 minutes of exercise increases homocysteine, but when scientists measure the effects of exercise on homocysteine levels in men and women after a 12 week program, it significantly decreases homocysteine, just as you would expect. So once again, basically everything you do to improve your health will improve your homocysteine. So that's what you should focus on. And of course, on the flip side of that, smoking is known to be associated with increased homocysteine levels on a blood test. And alcohol increases homocysteine with both vodka and red wine. So you hopefully can see the overall pattern here. Work on getting better sleep, better sex hormones, consistent exercise, optimal vitamins and minerals. But the most important thing for lowering homocysteine is vitamin B6 and B9. Uh, if you're not getting enough of these vitamins, it's a problem. B6 is easy because that's found in animal products across the board. So eat plenty of meat, eat eggs, eat seafood, you're good. B9 is a bit more complicated. My suggestion for understanding vitamin B9 is to watch my video specifically on the MTHFR gene, which I'll link below. It's a crazy story where corruption from the US government is involved. And if, B9, if, and if B6 and B9 and healthy habits are not enough, you probably need some professional help one-on-one, -on -one. but try methylglycine, also called betaine, because it was discovered in beets, uh, but TMG, Betaine lowered homocysteine by 1.8, which isn't as good as B9, which lowered homocysteine 2.7 in this study. But TMG, trimethylglycine, is another good supplement to have up your sleeve if you've tried all the basics. Another supplement is NAC if you're really struggling due to problematic genetics. So I hope this all helps and comment with more links to scientific studies for strategies you know that help lower homocysteine. People look for those comments and it really helps. 
And keep in mind, the optimal range for homocysteine is below 7. So don't rely on the reference range on your blood test if you want to be optimal.